This evening's session is slightly different to our previous two webinars. We're hoping to try and make it new, uh, make it interactive. Uh, it's a new venture for us, so hopefully, fingers crossed, it will go well, and we'll, we'll, um, we'll. I think if we can come out of this evening's session with you having some ideas of uh, new go-to places for resources for the level two learning programs, we'll be doing well. Um, so just to start there, then um, the, the slide that you can see at the moment is it's indicating two areas to you: the question mark and also then the handouts um, icon. So we do have a handout and it does contain links to various websites. Those websites um, have been given to us as we've been out on the ground with um, teachers, with yourselves, and uh, you may find them useful. Um, the question button icon then is the one that you're going to press when there's different interactive moments within the webinar that you might use the question button to um, answer or to share your experiences. Okay, great. So we'll move on. So the purpose of today's session then is to highlight uh, some of the sources of resources, and that's a tongue twister, to highlight some of the uh, resources for L2LPs that are on three websites in particular, um, curriculumonline.ie, skullnet.ie, and jct.ie. And we'll also hear teacher voice um, by you sharing experiences. And if we get time at the end, we'll look to actually trying to co-create um, a teaching and learning experience that's multimodal, uh, that would be beneficial to, to students that are following the level two learning programs. So the first place that we're going to go to is our own uh, website, jct.ie. Um, so for those of you that have had any L2LP training before, we do try to highlight the different sections on the JCT website as much as possible. Um, it is the go-to place for all uh, the sub for, for anything to do with junior cycle um, and from a, from a CPD point of view. So we're going to go and have a look uh, now at JCT and we're just all the different, um, I suppose, teams, different uh, departments within JCT. We've obviously gone into the L2LP section. So if I just bring you back to home, um, you'll see we have our book icon down here. When you click onto L2LPs, you're met with um, our icons then for the different sections within our own uh, part of the site. So for today, we're going to highlight the resources section. Now, you, you can be doing this at the same time if you want to as, as you're listening to the webinar or the webinar will be recorded and you'll be able to go and you'll be able to have a look um, at this again in your own time. Um, we are going to highlight one of these. These are all videos basically on this resources uh, section and it's the L2LPs in action. So you'll be able to get some helpful ideas from the videos that you see here and um, you can see there's all the different PLUs uh, with different elements. We're going to actually share this video with you now. Um, we might not look at all of it, it's about four minutes long so we'll, we'll just see how we get on um, but it's basically what it says, uh, sample worksheets for different PLUs. So we'll just take a quick look at this. And the purpose of watching this video is that you will get an idea as to how some teachers on the ground um, create what the kinds of resources that some teachers on the ground created to meet uh, or to work towards learning outcomes.
So you can see that um, teachers have actually designed their own um, worksheets, their own resources. Um, our, our students have the, uh, themselves. Um, there isn't a textbook for the level two learning programs. Um, there's, we're going to have a look at Skullnet in a little while, uh, where there are some resources that have been created. They are they're stored there on Skullnet, but there isn't a textbook. And um, it would be, I don't know what what other people think. It could maybe be be something that we talk about when we uh, listen for teacher experience. I don't know what people's thoughts are on that. Um, I know they're helpful, but do they prescribe? Um, what needs to be covered in classes and does that kind of fly in the face of the whole point of L2LPs? Of course, there'll be certain uh, books that are useful to help students work towards learning outcomes, but to, to be that prescriptive that you have to get every single page in this workbook done, um, I, I don't know, it, maybe it's a, too restrictive. So you can see there are a variety of, um, I suppose, teacher-made worksheets or the use of photographs of students completing work, completing activities that, that are then used uh, to maybe do some comprehension questions around or spidergrams around, um, lots of different, different things. Um, Skullnet, when we do look at it, the, the whole point of Skullnet is that we, we don't, necessarily have to go reinventing the wheel that if teachers will use Skullnet to share resources there may be something there that is appropriate to the student or students that you're working with in, uh, in your own classrooms. Okay I'm going to pause that video there if that's okay. I, you Again you can come back to it in your own time. Uh, so that one there is the sample worksheets for the PLUs that we just looked at. All of the other videos then, as I said, show PLUs, different PLUs and different learning outcomes in action. Um, I would recommend looking at the bottom four as well. These are all L2LPs and technology. Um, so you see how digital applications have been used to help um, work towards learning outcomes from the PLUs. Um, we have also, Padlet, video on Padlet that will be going up shortly as well. I think we're all familiar with Padlet and Kahoot. Um, this fourth video here, L12Ps and technology for Seesaw, we'll be referring back to this when we talk about ePortfolios, um, as this is an ePortfolio um, uh, option for schools. Um, but we'll, we'll come to that in a few moments. Okay, so if we can just go back to the PowerPoint then. Um, and you can see then we've also highlighted um, our sister support service, the SESS or um, NCSE. Um, the SESS.ie website is an absolute wealth of information. So again, if I can just click onto um, the SESS website. For those of you that have been on, you'd be familiar with um, the layout of it. Um, we've gone into resources and we've gone into curricular material on the left hand side. And what we were drawing your attention to, and I suppose this was mentioned on mainstream L2LP days in particular, um, the documents, the NCCA guidelines for teachers of students with mild general learning disabilities for post-primary. The, they are there for primary as well for any teachers that are joining us from special schools. But the, the post-primary ones have been created or were written for um, different, all the subjects, basically. Uh, so you see there. Uh, there's the one for English. There's one for um, CSP. Now you have to remember that these are based on the syllabus, the old syllabus or syllabi, is that the plural for that, uh, this, for the subject. So they don't tie into the new specifications if you have your new subject specification out, but they are very well worth document, uh, document to tap into because they have exemplars of 
um, worksheets and of um, activities. So approaches and methodologies and exemplars. Uh, you, if you flick down to here, you'll see what I mean. And actually, they're well worth a, a, a read because they um, highlight maybe some of the challenges or difficulties that students in general uh, with additional learning needs may have in classrooms and they have supporting activities and different ways of assessing and uh, so that you students have access to and can engage content in your class classrooms but you can see there's there's um sample worksheets and different activities there so again these could you could add these to your um you can use them to supplement the material that you're building um, just, I suppose, from my own background of teaching L2LPs, we started off with a one A4 ring binder um, of for per PLU, where we would store our worksheets and um, any activities or anything like that. There now we now have a big one of the big double ring binders per um, PLU that's bursting that's going into nearly two folders each so you it will take time but you will build up a resource bank you will find that an awful lot of the resources that you were using for um, maybe if you were running a qqi program or even the jcsp resources um, are also like you're they're not going to not be used um, so you it's it is a case of i suppose scouring and and building up your resource bank uh, from lots of different areas um so yeah those documents there are really well worth having a look at and um they're as we said they're done for each subject area so they are on the scss website so with history home ec music pe sphe drama okay all the different subject areas so if you haven't been on there do the other um, place that or the other section on this uh, on the SESS website that I find particularly helpful or found particularly helpful I suppose when I'm starting off in special education is signposts so signposts tells you or there's different uh, I suppose the different learning needs down the left hand side here and there's links then to further reading I suppose if you're uh, looking for more information around a particular need this would be your uh, uh, definitely a part of call to inform yourself and upskill so even if we click onto our mods general learning disability page uh, you'll see strategies for learning and teaching over here. So it's like it's a wealth. It's it, it's you have to play around and have time just to explore that website. Okay, so that's the SESS website. So I'm just going to pop back to the PowerPoint. We will have referred to some of these uh, pages on um, any of the L2LP training that we've given in special schools and post-primary clusters. So some of these you're probably you're probably aware of, um, and that's okay. It's always good to refresh, I think. Okay, so curriculumonline.ie is um, hosted by the NCCA. So again, okay, just going to come over. And if you go to Junior Cycle, L2LPs, Sample Activities, it will bring you to this page here. So what you have here are some very useful uh, videos of L2LPs in action. So they're from both special schools and post-primary schools. Um, you, you'll also see, so you'll see how like this one up here, for example, the maths and the geography, that's the PLUs in action in mainstream classrooms alongside um, the, well, in that case, it would have been the geography syllabus and the math syllabus, but um, the content, again, the, the videos are going to give you ideas of 
um, resources that you might utilize and put in place. Okay. So Skullnet, uh, there's, I have to say, I think we tweeted, oh, I don't know, I'd say it was a couple of months ago to say we had 30 something resources up on Skullnet and we were really pushing um, Skullnet as the place for teachers to start to share resources. And that certainly happened. Um, and it's fantastic because one of the main fears are, yeah, I suppose fears are concerns that uh, we hear about on the ground when we're given CPD is where do the resources come from and how am I going to support the students? And so a lot of the time, and myself included, I just needed a, like an idea just to, to start me off, to know that I was going in the right direction. And Skullnet certainly provides that. So I'm just going to go into Skullnet. Um, I would say most of you, if not all of you, are familiar with Skullnet. If not, it's skullnet.ie. And basically, uh, it's broken down into primary and post-primary. Um, so obviously, we're going to go into junior cycles. You use this search bar up at the top, and uh, you see all the different subjects then. And the number beside them is the number of resources that are contained within that um, folder or within that subject area. So we do have one there for short courses. Uh, and if you look at them, then they're broken down into um, the different short courses that are available at junior cycles. So caring for animals level two, there's 19 resources in this um, folder and it's broken down then into the strands so learning about dogs there's 11 resources so just to show you you search and here we have different resources that have been uploaded um so if i can just click on this you see there could be worksheets there could be PowerPoints, there could be cahoots, there could be videos, it could be a link to a website. Um, but really, you know, I, I, I kind of wish it was <laughs> this was here when I started teaching the L2LPs, um, because it really is, I think, a great starting point for teachers. So let's have a look now. See, this one is... Uh, a resource type that's a presentation as well let's have a look life cycle of a dog yeah so that, that's another presentation as well but there could be um as i said worksheets websites all the rest okay so uh for skull net then you do as as we was as we started there there's resources for the short courses for the level two short courses sorry just before i go off that one there's also um school a place there for school developed short courses so you'll see oops the link there to a, a, a short course that has been written by a school downloads as a document so when you open it this would be one of the um school design short courses uh where am i from where am i going which many of you may have um been looking for or have heard about on um on one of our cpd days so it's really um like it's fantastic that the school has decided to share it there i suppose it always comes with the caveat that it was designed for this a specific group of students in that school uh so you would really need to look at it um to see is it suitable for your own students okay now so just to go back to skullnet then so we've got our short courses we have an l2lp section and 107 resources so 
that rose significantly, uh, which is fantastic. And I'd, I'd love to see, oh, I suppose every teacher teaching L12Ps would love to see um, it further populated. So after this webinar, hopefully you'll have um, resources yourselves that you'd like to share. Um, so we'll just show you a couple of them. So we're in Living in the Community. Let's say if we go to resolving conflict. And again, with different worksheets and presentations and whatnot. Oops. You see over on the right hand side, um, the whenever a teacher uploads to Skullnet, they, they map it. They have to in, indicate um who is the worksheet or the resource for um and at what level is it for so you'll see over here the jc is junior cycle and l2lp so if i was to go to um living in the community let's say developing good relationships you see this one here on substance abuse is has been mapped to SPHE and L2LP. So that's a resource that could be used in um, level three SPHE class and also meets that learning outcome or a learning outcome or a couple of learning outcomes from the PLUs and the L2LPs. Okay. Um, there's another, there's a cahoot there. So really, I can't, we, you know, Skullnet is the place for, for teachers to share their resources and um, to, to populate that would be great because it means that more teachers, we're not reinventing the wheel basically. But I would say with any of the resources that go up here, you, you know, you have to look at them in, um, you have to look at them in, relation to the students that you have in front of you. Um, okay. So we're going to go back. There is just, I'm going to, you see the link on this uh, page here. That's to a video that uh, is available actually on Skullnet. Uh, the video is about uploading um, content to Skullnet. So if you do have resources that you do want to upload going forward um, that video there is obviously going to tell you in, in in much more detail than i can as to how you might go about uploading a resource okay uh, this webinar, I think I said it earlier on anyway, is being recorded, so it will be available and we've also in our handouts uh, section um just we've put up a document that um contains different websites that teachers have given us that possibly they may or may not be up on um on on Skullnet. so these are all of those they're just starting points you know uh, they're all on, on that handout that's attached so you can see different different ones there. And they are from when we've been out in, in schools on the ground, these are our websites that teachers have have um, shared with us and have said we we found some quite useful resources on here. So you may find them resourceful as well. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking for a little while and we just want to hand over this the first moment that we're going to try and do something interactive so we, we'd just like you to share a website or a digital technology app um, that you found particularly useful for teaching learning and assessing the l12ps and i suppose if you can give us the name of that website or that app and tell us why you found it particularly useful or perhaps the the plu that it was particularly useful for um, so we're just going to take maybe four or five minutes to give people a chance um, to write share their resource share their share what they found and then we'll take a, a check-in point okay so i'll come back to you in five minutes
Hi everyone, we're back. Oh wow, there's a lot going on in um, in schools and in classrooms. Thank you for um, taking the opportunity to share some of the uh, websites and and uh, different places that you've sourced resources uh, already because it's not easy. We know that it's not easy, um, and you can spend an awful lot of time. Uh, but you know, you're you're doing it. To, to try and meet the needs of the students in front of you. Um, so Skullnet, I suppose, is the is the you know is is as we've said. I mean, um, the place where we're going to share all of those. I'm going to hand over to Don, who is just going to talk us through um, some of the suggestions, some of the the places that you have um, alluded to in that time. Hi everyone. Um, some of these I've heard of before and some I haven't, so it's it's a, a great uh, learning curve for me also. Uh, Health.promotion.ie, somebody has suggested as a good source for SVHE uh, materials to use with your students. Um, the PDST, of course, as well, is, is another great source of uh, resources for students with SEN. Um, particularly um, in terms of digital technology, they have some great suggestions for very innovative digital apps you can use. Um, NALA, which I'm very familiar with, is the National Adult Literacy Association. And when I was teaching, I would have used NALA quite a, a bit. Um, the read-write books uh, were very useful, and there was some great stuff on uh, literacy um, and numeracy for adults. And the great thing about it is that it is age-appropriate. Um, so a lot of it can be um, can be applied to our students because some of the, the materials that were available for say numeracy were quite um, babyish. Um, so it, it, as I say, it is for adult learners, uh, but it can be used as uh, to supplement your own numeracy or your maths classes. And I suppose just to come in there, um, you were you were saying there, Don, about numeracy, maybe resources that you were using before being quite babyish, and I think. A lot of us would have gone to primary uh, resources, and that was a really that was a huge concern to teachers. And that's one of the reasons why the L two L Ps were actually designed because it's about it being an age appropriate uh, curriculum, um, which warrants age appropriate resources as well. So, yeah, okay, we you know maybe using uh, resources that are for adult learners is is maybe flip side of that that kind but at least it's more age appropriate and I suppose you differentiate it um, to the students that you have in front of you but yeah yeah um, some other ones then coming in are sen.teacher.org uh, again this isn't one I would be familiar with but um, uh, one of uh, the participants has highlighted it as a good place to get um, resources for your class um, twinkle which has come in quite a bit um, from people um, and it is uh, again a good place to get uh, resources. I haven't used it. It's spelt T W I N K uh, Y L as um, as far as I can see there. And again, it, it's it's a good place to go get resources. Um, this sounds like an interesting one. Learning chocolate, which <laughs> I haven't heard of before, but it sounds great. Um, and, and it's for communication and literacy, and um, somebody has recommended it. Um, yeah, so just to say the Twinkle one again is twinkl.co.uk. So if, if you um, go to that, there are resources there also. Um, people have been mentioning Aldi catalogues, which I think are brilliant for any numeracy activities, because we're talking about um, real life situations, and also a resource is Aldi itself. Um, you know, going on the trip if you if you can, bringing the kids out on a social outing to Aldi, showing them uh, where things are in the shopping aisles, getting them to read prices uh, for budgeting, and then bringing the catalogues back into the classroom, and it's a good way for planning an outing. Um, people have used Scrabble um, uh, to get some social site vocabulary for students um, to come up with personal words. So there's a Scrabble online as well that they can use. Um, and people have also mentioned using online menus in cafes and restaurants, particularly cafes and restaurants in your local town or city where 
um, it's very good that the students know uh, what's an offer there, what they, they like, how they go about and ordering it, and it could be a precursor again to an outing that they would go on. Um, uh, keep them coming in, and it's great to share this, these sorts of things. Uh, when we go out to schools, we're learning all the time about new um, sources for getting resources because with the Level 2 Learning Programme, um, you do need to kind of look around for the resources and it's it's good now that school that are putting them all up in one place. Um, and I think think outside the box and try and be creative. And again, I know it's a tough job, but um, I think we're, we're, you know, that's what you have to do. Yeah. The, the Smiths catalogues, when, while you're mentioning the Aldi catalogues, are also a very great, uh, great resource. And uh, of course, Argos is another great one. Um, there's always something in there for everybody. But you can make up worksheets, and they can pick maybe the five things that they like best in a, in the Argos catalog. You know, for literacy, write the names of them down, and the price of them, and maybe as an extension activity. Then, if they had a certain amount of money, um, how many of those things could they get, and what change would they get from it? Um, all of that tactile and concrete uh, learning is what will, will stick with our students. Um, so there are brilliant ideas. Okay. okay, great. Thank you, everyone. So um, I think all of the, the things that have just, well, some of the things that have come up there will tap in and, and um, I suppose be useful for us when we're working in the classrooms with our students. Um, towards the learning outcomes and I think when on any of the CPD, L12P CPD that you may have been on or even if you look at the, the first two webinars um, when we talk about po the portfolio and types of evidence in the portfolio, um, portfolios are built up of worksheets, of audio, of photographs, of, of worksheets, of uh, maybe the assessment checklist where you have teacher observation or a comment or feedback. So all of that suggests this kind of multimodal way of working with students and allowing them demonstrate their learning in, in the best way that highlights and showcases their achievements and their knowledge. Um, just on the portfolio, we do have a couple of sample portfolios. So I mentioned one previously, which was the with a little video on Seesaw and how Seesaw can be used. We've also got two sample e-portfolios on the on our webs on the JCT website again. Um, and this time it is under um, assessment. So uh, you see the assessment checklist, of course, you don't have to have an e-portfolio. It can be a, just a, a folder of um, work that has been completed with students. But again, I would suggest photographs and um, maybe pieces of artwork or an artifact so that it's not all worksheet based. But you'll see there on the L12P's um, section under assessment and overview of junior cycle the links to the two e-portfolios. Uh, so this one is Weebly, and you can see students can actually take control of this themselves, um, and they can upload photographs, and they can upload text um, and videos or pieces of audio. So um, this one is split up into the different uh, PLUs. And have hyperlinks also to different worksheets. So again, even even knowing that these exist will enable you as teachers to look, to explore, uh, maybe to get an idea from pictures, from photographs of of what students got up to or how teachers have uh, worked towards learning outcomes. And it, it might just give you that. It might just spark that creative uh, thinking in relation to. Um, creating learning experiences. Okay, so um, the I suppose the types of evidence really when we think about how um, you know when we talk about different types of evidence in a portfolio that really lends itself to that idea of learning uh, being multimodal uh, for students that are following the level two learning programs. Um, on our Principles in Action Day, we've been talking, we, we've talked about universal design and how uh, teachers can really 
be again i'm using that word again be creative in their classrooms in relation to how they represent content and information to students to in, firstly to enable them to access the content uh, but also to enliven that classroom experience so when we we're talking about multimodal we're talking about students in, experiencing and engaging with content through different modes so visually audit, auditory audibly auditory um, by um, listening to it by working maybe with digital technology so but it's multimodal in that you it's you're using more than one so you could have a video of something as well as uh, the artifact there that you know maybe they're exploring with their hands or um, and in doing that and in, in utilizing that method um, you're really ensuring and um, students can access and engage because we all have different, I suppose, different strengths, different interests, different talents. Um, I know I'm a visual learner, and but I also I have to write the things down to remember. You know, um, whereas my son, he is very very um, kinesthetic, so he has to, everything. He has to do everything moving. Uh, and you know does everything through touch and learns through it learns through touching things and um, getting to grips with them so I suppose if you can look at how you can make your classrooms multimodal you're tapping into students and their strengths um, and their strengths of how they learn um, and also their existing knowledge um, it's a good way also of um, maybe you've, you're working with level three and level two programs in your classrooms, specifications and the programs in your classroom. So if you are working in a multimodal way, it could be a way that all students could access content. They're just doing it in different ways. I think um, the portfolios are certainly evidence of multimodal expression. So the fact that students are allowed to demonstrate their learning in lots of different ways. Um, well, and that supports, um, I suppose, that supports all of those different um, types of resources on Skullnet and, and the ones that you have in your own resource banks. We're going to just have a look at this video. It's the Caring for Animals video, and it's... Um, learning activities that uh, students undertook as they were working towards the case study task um, that was in the, the that's a, in the cba um that's part of the cba for the caring for animals so we just we'll again we'll only watch this for a couple of minutes but just to give you a few ideas of learning um in action so what we'd like you to look out for are the different ways students are engaging with and demonstrating their learning okay so i'm just going to click onto this video again after this after watching this video we'll give you the chance to you can actually do it as you're watching the video if you want to um it'll give you the chance to say say what you see basically write what you see Sorry, guys, we're getting uh, feedback there. I just want to try. Oh, technology is going to fail us after all this. <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop because you can't hear. So uh, there's, you'd see different activities going on uh, as students are working towards uh, working through the, the um, learning experiences uh, within this short course. 
um but again these this this video is up on curriculum online so you could have a look at it if you haven't done so already you could have a look at it in your own time um so if that's okay just because i don't want to i don't want to give you a headache with the feedback um okay so we'll just pause that there very sorry about that guys we're actually coming up to nearly um finishing time as well um we won't do the check-in then because we've uh didn't give you we didn't get, get the chance to look at the video but that's okay let's have a look at um just maybe coming up with brainstorming being creative around um this this uh next activity then so this is a sign of um this is sorry this is a sign of stress <laughs> webinars are a sign of stress no um uh, this is a learning outcome um from the level two learning programs okay so um we when we're doing cpd we when we're we're looking at learning outcomes we're we're looking at okay well what do we actually want the students to demonstrate here how do we know that they've achieved that learning outcome so really we we have to look at breaking it down before we can rebuild up uh, the classroom experiences um, and be able to then I suppose plan to assess and 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 be able to say yeah we we know that that student has achieved that particular learning outcome so if we were to break this down and again if you can respond using the question button here what if that's a learning the learning outcome there recognize some of the signs of stress what would you hope your students um would be able to do how are they going to show you that they have achieved that so what do you want to see in action what knowledge should they have achieved what skills should they have developed um what values may, might they have um developed around that learning um and within those learning experiences so just two minutes to have a think. Okay, brilliant. Uh, there's some really nice responses coming in here. Uh, and you've actually gone on to the next bit, which is what might a multimodal teaching and learning experience look like. So I know we've very little time to do this. And this, you know, um, we, we'd be looking to do this in a little bit more in depth in future CPD. But it gives you an idea of where you might start. So some of the responses there quite that we've got is using body language and sounds, recognizing physical signs, name some signs of stress, 
identify stress stress signs. So that could be through pictures, it could be through role play. Um, have them identify from peers and family when the behaviour of the others is out of character, so that they're seeing it in real life. Um, they're, they're, they're actually seeing it in real life experiences in the classroom or in um, their, you know, at home or on the street or somebody's walking in a crossway. Drama is another great one. Yoga and breathing techniques and knowledge. Emotions with clay. Actually, that I saw some really nice work where uh, teachers had, uh, students had um, engaged with emotions, recognising emotions and dealing with signs of uh, stress using clay. I thought it was just lovely. And, um, again, I'd never thought of that back in my own classroom. So uh, these little snippets of, of um, ideas. Five point scale of emotions and stress. What to do if chat. Coping strategies. Lots and lots of different um, ideas there. Use a mirror to help them see their facial expressions. Yeah, I mean, quite often, I, I uh, children, you know, don't, you know, you ask them to make a sad face or a happy face, uh, but for them to actually see themselves, um, unless you might be looking at pictures of people in different scenarios and uh, getting students to act out the scene, and then they might write about a time that they were stressed, or, um, talk about a time that they were stressed. Okay. The, there's a wealth there, um, and we will be able to share um, all of these responses as well. But again, a good idea to, to just just snippets of, of ways to uh, get started in a particular area. Of course, I've gone to the beginning of the presentation. Just want to show you um, two other things before we wrap up for the evening. Um, so. I don't know if uh, if any of you have heard of, I suppose they're called lots of different things, but um, it's teach, again, from the ground, uh, coming back from CPD, we've, we've heard about tic-tac-toe boards. So as you can see, tic-tac-toe is a way of students tapping into um, working on content or working on activities or but in the multimodal way so that if you've a student that is um that's big into drama and role play that they have that opportunity to demonstrate what they've learned through uh dramatizing or maybe you've somebody who's very um who loves to do in surveys and and you know chatting with people and finding out opinions that students could they could do a survey so again uh, creating a tic-tac-toe board like that um might just it, it might challenge your thinking and your approach to how can i make this multimodal how can i give students the opportunity to demonstrate something in an artistic way or um, an, maybe verbally in an oral presentation or even um you know design a quiz and run that quiz with students in their classrooms. Uh, one teacher said when we were looking at these, would, would you just get them to do one of those or would you maybe do actually play tic-tac-toe and you know that they have to pick three of those and that they're they're varied. So again you're challenging and you're opening you're opening students up to different experiences. Now the last thing I want to um, give you a heads up on are some key some of the key skills documents now you may have heard about these on your whole school day um, these are hosted on the ncca uh, website and i'm just going to click out of them again there's one for each of the key skills this one is for communicating uh, and <clears throat> excuse me um it, again it's jam-packed with uh different ways you can um encourage students to engage different things that you can do as a teacher um, to work towards and develop those key skills uh, with our students so again another useful resource um, for us to have in our classrooms these had actually have links as well look to to um, websites okay so yeah, you can find those ones on the NCC or you can just you can type in key skills into Google and it will pull it up for you. So just to finish off, I um, suppose we, we probably feel that we've maybe done this throughout the 
uh, webinar. So if you want to click off, it, we, it's no problem at all. But if you want to share a success story um, in relation to teaching, learning or assessing the L12Ps, you're more than welcome to do so now. Um, just before I set you off on that, um, we'd just like to thank you. We hope it's been useful. It's the first webinar that we've done like this, this interactive uh, interactive way. So hopefully you've taken something from it. Um, and um, you've, you've a couple of go-to places uh, for ideas of, of uh, resources that will lead to learning experiences in you, um, in your classrooms. Yeah, I'm just going to say as well, we will email out any of the brilliant websites that have been suggested to us and resources. Um, so it'll be an opportunity for people to, to see what other people have been suggesting. So thanks again to all of the suggestions. Uh, they, they're really, you know, this is how we're going to put our programs together, really, by sharing. So thanks. Um, it's been good. <laughs> My first <laughs> webinar. So uh, thanks to everybody for listening in. No problem. We leave um, we we'll leave the webinar open for the next five minutes. We'll pull everything together then before signing off. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Good evening.